Hey folks, I'm Fred and welcome to Don't Go Chasing Percentiles, Use Histograms If You Want Precision Latency. I'm happy to be speaking here again at SLOConf in 2022. So let's get started. First off, what's up with this title? Well, uh, there was a, a Super Bowl show earlier this year and I was pretty inspired by that. And I thought I can give a talk um, about this to the tune of TLC's Don't Go Chasing Waterfalls. And I actually tried to do that. I wrote the lyrics and did a couple takes and it turns out I'm an awful singer. I can't hold pitch and uh, I can't do timing. The rap section in the song, that I could handle. But anyway, I decided to rework this into a traditional presentation. And I came up with these lyrics and it said, don't go chasing percentiles. Please stick to the histograms and latency bands. I know that you want your P99 or nothing at all, but I think the errors aren't known. And if you look at this picture here, I've got uh, a map on the North shore of the island of Kauai, um, which is a hike to Hanakapiai Falls. And it's about a two hour hike in, and it's pretty difficult. I did it about 10 years ago. It's a fantastic hike but it really gave me some inspiration for this talk. And on a side note, I recommend you try this hike if you're ever there. So again, I'm Fred, I'm a slow logician, like a statistician at Zendesk. I think a lot about SLIs, SLOs, and air budgets. I like to hack on observability things. I've been doing the uh, programming thing for a while and I definitely need more sleep and coffee. So let's get at it. Let's talk about SLOs. So you know, most of you folks have, have read through the traditional material on the topic, the SRE book, the workbook, um, Alex's uh, book that came out about a year ago. And what I see is two types of SLOs, percentile based SLOs, which use a P99 uh, to define your homepage latency or some other type of request under a certain threshold over a time span. And the other type is what I call uh, latency band or events or metric based SLOs. And that specifies a percentage of requests coming in under a certain threshold over the same time span. Now there's a subtle difference here. One will say, I want my P99 under this limit. And the other will say, I want my total number of requests under this threshold. And if you look at these, and if folks here have used tooling you know, in different observability slash monitoring solutions, you'll kind of see both of these uh, options implemented in some of the major solutions. And really, I'm here to talk about why I think you should focus on the second option, which is specifying the total percentage of requests that you want under a threshold versus just, you know, looking at something like a P99. And let's dive in. So talk glossary. I'm going to be talking about a few things here. Quantile sketch. A quantile sketch is essentially an approximate histogram in the form of a latency distribution structure. And I'll give a couple examples in a second. Everyone knows what percentiles is, P99. Uh, nobody wants to give that up. Uh, that means 99% of your requests will be faster than some latency. A histogram is, which I'm sure a lot of folks are familiar with, is similar to a quantile sketch, but it's more, it's not an approximation. It's where you keep an exact count of your latency samples in what are called bins or also referred to as buckets, which is essentially a range of like, you know, say zero to 10 milliseconds. Um, and a latency band is really one of those bins, say, if I say my latency sample range is 10 to 20 milliseconds, and if I have a 15 millisecond sample, it's going to drop in that latency band. And we can have a couple different examples of latency bands. But you know, percentile based SLOs, how do they work? You know, normally you can't aggregate percentiles just because of the math behind it. So most of the commercial solutions are using what are called sketches, as I mentioned. There's a G D GK sketch, uh, there's the DD sketch uh, recently released by Datadog and uh, Ted Dunning's T-Digest histogram, approximate histogram. Now, latency bands, how do they work? Um, we all know what a histogram is. Um, so when we talk about latency best SLOs, we're going to want to say like, I have a certain percentage in the case of you know enterprises, you probably want somewhere around 99.95% of requests below a certain threshold. Um, and so histograms will give you these bins where you can have latency captured above 100 and below 150, et cetera. Um, and in terms of types of histograms, HDR histograms are generally the best in class. There's openhistogram.io, which is excellent. And there's Jill Teen's HDR histogram, which is also very good. Uh, I gave a talk a while ago at my uh, job, where, which was titled Dr. Histogram, How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love Latency Bands. 
And that was kind of a take on the title of a famous movie. But this shows three different types of histograms here. On the left, we have open histogram, which is a log linear histogram. And so if I've got a latency of 125 milliseconds, I'm gonna choose uh, that bar right there, which is colored blue. And that basically says like, oh, this was greater than 100, but less than 200 milliseconds. And the exact boundaries might differ a little bit. And they do for open histogram. There's also, which folks are probably familiar with, the cumulative histogram, which is used in Prometheus, where if I've got 125 milliseconds, it's going to specify a set of metric tags, which basically say like less than infinity, less than a thousand, less than 200. And that's how you designate what your latency um, uh, sample lies in. And then at Zendesk, I came up with this thing called the inverse cumulative histogram, which is basically taking the cumulative histogram and turning on its head. You know, in this case, you know, 125 milliseconds, you'd have greater than 10, greater than 50, greater than 100 metric tags, but not greater than 200. And this one turned my head a little bit and was hard for even me to understand, but it has the advantage over the cumulative implementation of not having a lot of tags for really low latency values. So three things really I want to talk about with percentile-based percentile based SLOs versus latency band SLOs. And let's dive in first and talk about SLI flexibility. So say if I had a percentile-based SLO, you know, and my P99 of request needs to be under 450 milliseconds. Well, you know, if my P99 comes in at 400 milliseconds, is that 10% better? And the answer is you just don't know because you can have uh, a request latency distribution which looks like this histogram, which is an open histogram implementation in the background. And you might have a mode. And so your P99 could be you know, under 450 milliseconds, but then 400 milliseconds could lie, say, in that trough there between those two modes. And so you don't, you know, all you know is that you mess up, met your SLO. You don't really know by how much. And that's a little bit different than, you know, if you do uh, a latency band based SLO, which is where you can say like, okay, I want 99.95% of my request to be under 10 seconds. Well, I can also, you know, put a couple other SLIs in there and say like, I, you know, I want 99% of my request to be under 400 milliseconds, 450 milliseconds. You know, I want my median to be under 400 milliseconds. And this really allows you to specify those success objectives in terms of like, you know, 99.95% if you're in the enterprise. And that's a little bit different than, you know, just taking the traditional P99. And that also tells you like, you know, say if my success objective is 99.95%, um, that success objective is the percentage part of the SLO. And I only hit, you know, say 99.9, uh, .9, I can calculate you know, pretty well how many more events I have to uh, exhaust my error budget. And that's a, um, that's a pretty strong approach. And this using the latency bands, being able to choose different latency thresholds really allows you much greater SLI flexibility. Now let's talk about precision and accuracy, which is a, a big focus of this. You know, say I've got a percentile in my P99, you know, I want to be 500 milliseconds. You know, accuracy there from a lot of sketches can be around plus or minus 1%, which comes in around five milliseconds. That's pretty good. Um, but first let's talk about precision versus accuracy. Precision is the number of significant digits you have. Accuracy is how close your answer is to matching those number of uh, significant digits. Um, let's take a look at histograms and latency bands on this. My precision, I can go arbitrarily high if I'm counting, you know, if a certain event was, you know, under my threshold of 500 milliseconds. If I've got a million events, my precision can, you know, take the number of events that were under that uh, million, you know, under the threshold, which could be like 999,000 and then a thousand were over it. So I can get really high precision there. And also um, I can get uh, really high accuracy with this, you know, generally with um, histograms, you'll get, you know, worst case, you know, 5%, but that's really never seen in production. That's with like one sample per bin. Once you start dropping, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions or 10 millions of samples per bin, that's when you can get a really high uh, accuracy level. And I showed some numbers there just based on like the number of requests. Um, so uh, one thing I uh, pulled in for this, um, this talk is uh, a comment by Heinrich Hartmann, who's a data scientist, and this is off Hacker News. Um, and so what I wanted to, what I was looking for was, you know, if I've got a quantile sketch 
can I, you know, actually say like, hey, um, I want to know how many requests based on this quantile sketch are under, you know, different latency bands. You know, can I use a quantile sketch for latency bands as opposed to histograms? And, you know, the answer there is is generally you can kind of do that, and the accuracy is okay. Um, you know, for most data sets, um, the sketch mm -hmm. accuracy holds up, you know, sub one percent. Um, but really, when you're talking about enterprise customers, you're looking for something higher, like 99.95%. And I read through the um, paper on open histogram um, implementation, which was published by Theo Schlossnagel and Heinrich. And this two graphs really were quite excellent in telling me, you know, what I wanted to know. Um, you know, if you take a look here, the, um, the log linear open histogram, the red one at the bottom, that's got very low error. You know, some of the sketches have errors a little bit high, but those are still very good. Now, you know, this, this makes it look like, you know, these sketches do really well, but these are for single node implementations across a fixed time set. And once you start to merge those quantiles together, these errors become unbounded. And so it really comes down to like, you know, I can, you know, declare my accuracy for, you know, one quantile sketcher, but what happens when I take quantile sketches from say, you know, 5,000 hosts and then merge those over a week? You know, the error there is unbounded and really we don't have a good idea of what our accuracy is gonna be. And that's in contrast to just using a histogram and latency bands, which, you know, are exact counts and those are fully mergeable and the error there will be much less. Data visualization. Um, I produced this uh, uh, heat map here for load balancer latency a few years ago, and you can kind of see here how well this represents, you know, how well this load balancer is performing. You can see in the majority of requests we have, you know, fell within, you know, 500 microseconds. And then you can also see kind of, you know, with time on the X axis, how those played out. You know, we've got a, a regular cadence at 24 hour intervals where we've got you know, really a bright red um, impression there on the heat map, and that represents a lot more requests. Now, um, this is volume invariant, variant, which means that I can drop, you know, my count can go up for each one of these bins, and that doesn't change the uh, data size footprint of this structure. And really the, the really strong advantage of using a histogram here as opposed to a quantile sketch is you can do things like this. You can not really do this with a quantile sketch. It would take a serious amount of computing power and your accuracy is just not going to be there. And so that was a whirlwind tour of why I think you should really focus on you know, using latency band based SLOs as opposed to percentile based SLOs. Just want to give a quick shout out to Theo and Heinrich for you know, talking through a couple of things on this talk with me and shout out to my employer Zendesk. We're hiring. Have a great conference, folks. Thank you. Mm -hmm.